Good morning everybody, you're joining me out in Northumberland today. It's a beautiful spring day. It's bright, and it's brisk and it's just lovely. It's nice to be alive. Anyway, we're going to try something new today. So let's go and have a look at the river we're going to fish. As you can see, I've got the spring chicken with me. Go on, take a left. So here we are, we're on a section of the river Reed, and we're going to be fishing for trout. I've actually been looking forward to the opening of the trout season all year. And I've got this new rod to try out. It's a 10 foot three weight. And on the rod, I've got a Euro Nymphon leader, and I'm going to be fishing a couple of flies. I've got a beaded pheasant tail tied on a size 14 jig hook. And then on the drop off fly, I'm going to be fishing a spider pattern. So I've got a partridge and orange. And I'm just going to search some of this water. It looks good nymphon water to me. Not that I'm an expert. And this is my first ever attempt at Euro Nymphon. So I'm quite excited about that. So I think as is customary with my trout fishing, we'll sit in there five minutes just to see on the off chance if anything rises. I don't think it will. It is very early in the season and we are very far north in Britain realistically here. So probably not going to see anything rise. Uh, I have been starting to pick up a few trout on the salmon flies though of the last couple of times I've been out. Uh, which is a nuisance to be honest because you forget about trout in the very early part of the season because they're just not feeding so you're not picking them up and then when you do start catching them they think you've got a salmon and gives you a heart attack here's where we're going in we'll try that current stream up the middle there all the way up to the riffy bit at the top and just see how it goes it'd be nice to get a little fish or two. Oh, that's very soft banks ah but now we're gravel I think that's a gravelly bottom is it yeah all right that's nice so I'm about knee depth and I guess I'll just work straight upstream and then across rod, one rod length I've been doing a little bit of YouTube research like I must admit on how to do this and what was the crack so for line length or leader length it was 20 feet plus about four feet and I think the idea, this is from the um, Trout Bitten YouTube channel, which is, I know it's a big podcast as well. And they've got loads of online articles. Pretty nerdy stuff, like, but, you know, definitely a mine of information. Right, I think that's about the right length of lead out to be fishing. Uh, let's just give it a shot, I guess. That didn't go well. I am into a very strong wind here. So I guess we'll have to use like water load. Oh, that was better. And I think the idea is to try and keep a triangle. So I'm, I'm supposed to be in contact. Hmm. If I lift too much though, I end up with my ear. Uh, my wet flies up off the bottom. Oh, this is going to take a bit of learning, this is I tell you. I wonder if I shouldn't have a longer... I wonder if a longer line between the cider. So at the end of my cider, I've got a tippet ring. And then I tied on... A section of about what well, that must be what let's have a look maybe six feet of I think it's 5x fluorocarbon and then at the top of that I put a drop of that that feels like I've got a bit better controller yes yeah, so I don't know if that um, the drop is too high up Probably a bit too far across there not really touching the bottom which is strange up a bit no without the water load I can't really cast probably Yeah, 
when I lift the rod up, I'm just lifting the, um, it's such a strong wind that doesn't help. I'm just lifting the, the dropper fly up off the surface. So clearly that's not long enough. problem I'm having I just I can't see the cider so there's loads of glare and I'm not blessed with the best eyesight these days so you know the layer the sun's gone behind the clouds and I can't see at all Okay, so the casting is not easy in this wind. That's one thing I'm finding out. I'm managing to keep my, um, my dropper fly under the water. Oh, oh, that was an actual touch of a fish. Well, my goodness. Oops, and I've cast way over there. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so there's a fish got a hold of that. Got a hold of the, um, the nymph there. Well, I'm trying. I'm just trying to keep contacts. So I can't see anything. I can just about see the the knot on top of the um, cider section, but only in certain or from certain angles. So I guess I just have to try and, and feel for the fish. The light changing constantly with the sun going in behind, in and out of the clouds is making it really difficult. Oh, I think that was a touch again as well. I mean, it makes sense that a trout would take there because it looks like a trouty sort of place. I move there. Oh, that was surely a fish. I can see the knot now. Cast across, I just can't see anything. And I imagine I'm getting loads of drag as well, so I'm trying. Well, I say I'll try and stay within the, the lane that I'm intended to fish in, but the gusts of wind aren't helping. Oh, bloody hell. When the wind blows, you haven't got a chance. I wonder if I might need a heavier fly. All right, I'm going to turn the camera off and try and work this out. And I shall come back if we'll have any success.
Oh, there's a fish. That's not a bad fish either. Hey! Oh, that's awesome. That's a decent little trout too. It's that's awesome. I'm, I'm really happy with that. That is a lovely trout. Well, I never. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's an absolutely beautiful trout. Hello, bud. Have you spat the hook out? I think you have. I'm going to take a picture of this for my friend Bob Smith. Well, that was probably the most unspectacular session of Euronymphon ever been done by any angler ever. Um, I guess the whole point of Euronymphon is you're meant to get loads of takes and loads of fish, but uh, I managed one fish for my um, couple of hours effort there. I'm going to call it a day at that because, to be honest, the wind, the downstream wind is so annoying. It's just making me annoyed and putting me off. So I'll leave it at that for now. I managed to fish, so that gives me hope for the future. So anybody out there who has lots of experience with Euronymphon and uh, doesn't mind putting me right with a couple of pointers, like, like that... Um, top drop I think so why was that not um, under the surface or why was I struggling to get that down as much also any ideas for how to see a sighter well that would help greatly because literally I couldn't see that at all that was about maybe 10% of the drifts there that I could see the sighter clearly so um, that's not really ideal anyway uh, thanks for joining me in this little short video it's just a bit of fun just nice to get out and do something different the idea of learning how to urinate actually relates to salmon ultimately um, ultimately most of my thoughts do relate to salmon uh, but I want to try nymphing for salmon in the in the summer in the lower water so what I wanted to do was learn how to uh, recognize a take like an upstream take so that was why I wanted to try on the trout first plus I do enjoy trout fishing and uh, on this river there's actually there's there's some really nice trout I got a little taste of it last year I came up and did a video and I got eventually I got a few trout to take um, to take dry flies and they seemed really free rising so I guess maybe it's in like a month or two when it's warmed up a bit the water is still freezing and there's not much in the way of insects so we'll leave it a little bit longer and come back and try again with um, with a dry fly maybe a nymph under a dry Anyway, again, thanks for joining me, so we'll see you in the next video. I'll definitely be out for salmon. I've had a few days on the salmon, but uh, I've been blanking, so I've just kept those uh, kept those videos to myself. It's a lot of work to make videos, and sometimes when you fish as well, um, it's a bit distracting, so I wanted to put in a good couple of sessions on the salmon, um, see if I can get another springer. Anyway, thanks for joining me. See you next time.